the sportos, the motorheads, geeks, sluts, bloods, wasteoids, dweebies, dickheads. They all adore him. They think he's a righteous dude. Well, let's not get carried away. I'm an okay guy. I give to charity when I can. I help my fellow man whenever possible. I hoard cats. I might be a terrible person. But, righteous dude, I'll take it. That's actually from Ferris Bueller. It's the Matt Sager Podcast. I'm Matt Sager, and happy Thursday. A lot of changes in the works, a lot of developments. I'm actually pretty excited. Have a new host for this podcast, but it's in no way a reflection in any negative sense of my previous podcast host. The two hosts worked together to help me make this transfer. They made it effortless, cost me basically nothing. I'm now able to do everything I want to do. I can work in the home studio, out of the home studio, do remotes on my phone like OB Radio, broadcast live, take calls. This will all be possible by next week at the latest. And by the way, I'm taking Monday off. (laughs) Look, I am observing Labor Day. But on Tuesday, I'll be hosting my very first guest on the Matt Sager podcast. I'm very excited. It's a mystery guest. Maybe I'll tease it tomorrow. But it's an old friend of mine who I'm happy to have on the show. And I'm happy to have people on the podcast in general. Part of my purpose in switching hosts was making this a more communal experience. But I gotta say, you know, I put off starting a podcast for over a decade while doing stuff that was much more labor-intensive, much more complicated, much more involved, much more expensive, because I had this perception of it as something that... And this despite being a guy who's very... I like to think, you know, computer literate. But it seemed a bit inaccessible. It seemed like there was a lot to absorb. And because I'm a perfectionist, I wanted to do it 100% right. God forbid I stumble out the gate. But it turns out it's the easiest thing in the world to start a podcast. All these podcast hosts are amazing. They offer spectacular customer service, ridiculous amounts of flexibility and tricks you can do, and different tiers of membership if you want to broadcast this way. You can do it for free if you want to add a little bell and whistle here. It's incredibly affordable, and if you want to go all out, it's still affordable. Now, the podcast host I've gone with, I'm very happy with my choice. It's clearly the right match for me, for my goals, for what I want to attain with this podcast, for the flexibility I'm looking for with my unique set of circumstances, skills, lack thereof, pros, cons. It's it's just a good match. But as far as I can tell, of the major podcast players out there, from the free to the quite expensive, there is not a bad one in the bunch. There is an embarrassment of excellent podcast hosts out there, and it's very easy, and they help you every step of the way. So if you're contemplating starting a podcast, not that I'm looking for the landscape to be more crowded with shows or for competition, you know, I'm on episode 17, but I did basically just start this show. I haven't made a footprint yet. I'm just saying you don't have to go through what I went through. You could start a podcast tomorrow. It's the easiest thing in the world. None of the hosts, none of the services that I've encountered are bad. They're all just different degrees and varieties of good. There are some places that people go to podcast that you wouldn't normally associate with podcasting, and those actually are perhaps a bit ill-advised, at least as your primary host, although you could certainly syndicate to them. I'm thinking about services that are more catered toward websites or toward music. They're great for those things, but less great as homes for your podcast. But again, you can post an episode of your podcast there that you've hosted somewhere else initially. They don't give you any complaints, any grief. They make it very easy for you. They're very nice about it. The companies work together to make life easier for you as a customer slash content provider. It's all in all much easier and less stressful and better than, well, pretty much anything else in the world. So it turns out that podcasting is actually great stress relief and helps you renew your faith in your fellow man. I would not have anticipated that, but I'm pleased. And I'm incredibly excited about tomorrow. Friday, August 31st on Netflix, Ozark is returning. Season 2. If you're a Breaking Bad, Better Call Saul, film noir, anything dark, gritty, morally ambiguous, heavy on the anti-heroes, Jason Bateman is an incredibly versatile and talented actor who has not had the best year of it on Netflix in particular. You know, Arrested Development, season four, they remixed it and made it much less enjoyable and even cogent and intelligible. And season five, they released the first half, and I don't even know if they will or if they should bother releasing the second half. The shows have been terrible. It's a real disservice to the show, the show's legacy, the show's fans, and its stars. Really talented actors like Jessica Walter, David Cross, Will Arnett, and of course, Jason Bateman. 
Fortunately, he's also the lead of Ozark, which is also on Netflix. Ozark is... It's a popular trope, but I promise you this is a very original interpretation of it. Guy who appears to be a regular businessman with a happy, well-adjusted family who is actually really caught up in drug dealing, organized crime, and ultimately violence, murder. All the hits of the anti-hero who wears one face in public and at home with the family, and another when he's out, shall we say, Breaking Bad. The analogy is unavoidable. There's actually a video on YouTube called Why Is Everyone Comparing Ozark to Breaking Bad that explains exactly why you can't help but see a through line in the themes between the two shows. But that's where it ends. It's a crime drama involving people you wouldn't expect to be placed in that sort of genre. It's a classic film noir adapted to a serialized television streaming Netflix show. So binge season one now if you haven't already, and season two premieres tomorrow. The entire cast is extraordinary. Bateman, who has prior to this not been associated with this sort of entertainment, he is typically your comedic foil, but boy does he go dark. He is an amazing anti-hero. His wife, Wendy, who's played by Laura Linney, she is a fantastic actor on her worst day, and she just kills it in this show. Jonah, their son, is played by an actor named Skylar Gartner, who is one to watch. This kid is super talented. It's going to be a fun weekend binging on Ozark. What about you? What are your plans for Labor Day? Contact me. Send me emails at madamatsager.com. You can call, leave me a voicemail at 646-535-4788. Hit me up on social media. On Twitter, it's at Matt Sager. Facebook, The Matt Sager. My voiceover page is Matt Sager VO. And the podcast page is Matt Sager Podcast. I'm just gobbling up real estate all over the place on Facebook. And I've got more social links as well. Many more. And you can find them along with more episodes of this podcast, articles, blog posts, and a whole lot more at MattSagerVoiceOver.com. 